In this clip, I answer a question on whether you should run multiple applications in a container and how you can use Supervisor to do that. Verification error is back. What is your opinion on the usage of Supervisor D? So uh, that's a great question. Supervisor D, I'm assuming what you're referring to is putting Supervisor in the container and running it as the PID1 or the root process, right, in that container. That is fine if you need to do it, right? I know Docker's best practices are never more than one app per container. And I like to expose, sort of take that idea and say it's really never more than one concern per container. And when in some cases that concern might be multiple executables, and so you would need to start of those with something else. And it could be some sort of fancy shell scripting. I like using Supervisor D. In fact, if you look at my PHP repo, I do that. I have a horribly outdated PHP repo for Laravel. So it definitely needs some updates to use some of the modern new Docker features, but it shows off a couple of things uh, that are unique. And one of those is that for PHP, when you're using FPM, you need the PHP executable running and the Nginx executable running. And you could run those in separate containers, and that would probably be the official Docker way to do it if you were following their guidelines. But their guidelines are just that. They're just like best practices. They're the place to start, but it doesn't mean you have to stay there if you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. So in my case, I would, in, in this particular example, I combine both Nginx and the PHP FPM into the same container image, and I run them both with Supervisor D. And so it adds another layer of complexity because now I have Docker running a container that's actually running Supervisor and Supervisor's running Nginx and FPM. But I find that it works well, and I've, ran, I've run this on very large global websites that are running in lots of regions in AWS. So this design is definitely time tested and is used in heavily heavy scenarios. The reason I like this is because Docker and Swarm out of the box don't have the concept of a pod. If you're in Kubernetes world, you have a pod concept. And in that case, you could run the Nginx and the um, PHP side by side in their own containers inside the same pod. And that pod is deployed together. So when it's deployed onto a server, you would know that you'd get both and that they would both be able to use the sockets if you're familiar with this stuff in PHP, you, they use the sockets to talk back and forth. And that's very efficient. But in the Docker swarm way, you would do it out of the box that way, you would have to talk over TCP and that adds lots of lag. I mean, not lots of lag, it's maybe fine for some people. But when you're talking about going across server instead of just talking over a local socket inside the same kernel, there's definitely added, you know, possibly multiple milliseconds, if not tens of milliseconds of delay there. So I like to run them both in the same container and I use Supervisor D to do that. So check out that example. I will throw that in chat. I think I saw someone post that in there already. So hopefully that helps you out and that answers your question. Um, there's only a few places, by the way, that I use Supervisor D and that's one of them. Um, the other one might be like Cold Fusion because it also needs like Apache or something on the front end in order to work um, or, or Nginx. So anytime you have something where You've got a backend binary that has to run to emulate to run your code, and then you need some sort of web server in front of it, and they have to both work together to to deliver the service. It totally because they're always going to be deployed together, and you, one doesn't work without the other. It makes complete sense that um, they go together in that case in the same image, especially when you scale them. If you're always going to scale them one for one, um, because a lot of things that with containers you would want to scale differently, right? You're going to scale the number of APIs different than you're going to scale the number of database containers. So in those cases, you definitely want the flexibility and you want to be able to update them on uh, separately. In this case, I'm just going to update the app at the same time and it's, I'm always going to replace the containers at the same time. So it makes a lot of sense to do those together. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching. Click the subscribe and the notification bell down there will let you know when I go live every week to take your questions on Docker and DevOps. You can watch these videos over here or you can just go watch those cat videos you've been meaning to watch.